streams. Sorry. Good morning, guys. So, everybody showed up late today. I told them that I wasn't gonna fire them. They're actually hired on for an extra year. Oh, Signed for being night, late? For being late, so that way you guys can continue the punishment that is, like, I, I guess, working for most of I, I think it's, I think it's great working here. We got the key to the city right here. I'm gonna take this out. You take this thing. Look at you. Bam. Yeah, there's some good stuff. Right? So if if the battery was hooked up, this as soon as you open this door, you go custom. Nice. Nice. Come on in, Charles. Welcome Let to me. your future home. But this is my future home. Look at this headroom. What do you think? This thing's pretty nice, not gonna lie. A big old TV right yep, here? Yeah, big old TV. So let me know what your opinion is now that you've, like here, let me hold the camera and you okay. you look around. So this all pops out, yeah? Yeah, this is a whole slide. Okay. Just get a little extra. Jeez, I mean, it's a lot nicer than I expected. I feel like if you wanted to like resell it, you either refinish the cabinets, oh. like. Or you don't touch anything, because yeah. this is just what you get when you, when you get one of these. Look, it has a little. Oh, you're fried. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Look at this fridge. Full size fridge. Full size fridge. And then what's this? The freezer up here? Yep. Yep. There you go. Wow, this is like. You could sit down and. Oh, here's my little bed in your house. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is nicer than my house. Honestly, for four, Honestly, mo four months of rent, I bought this thing. Wow. Four That's months cool. of rent. Jerry, how you doing? Would that be fun? An RV? Yeah. yeah. Come check it out. Climb on up. Jerry, what do you think? You want to be in a video or no? I don't care. Oh, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the channel. What do you think of our RV? Doesn't look too bad. It's not bad. Not I want to go check this out. For what here. it is. So is this the shower, yeah? Yep. Go to, check it out. This so so this thing. pops out and then that pops and out? That other one pops out. Oh, right out, here, yeah. yeah. I could I could fire up the generator. Yeah, we can fire up the generator. Let's, the let's slide these out, dude. We have the slide out for the first time since uh, since I've had it. It wasn't really level at the, at the storage lot, so I didn't know how big. But look at this. Uh, this is like this is like this is like the living room. Look at all the room. Look at all this floor all space. Up. So much aerobics in here. So many activities. So much room, and then like my kids, they can sit here and just make a giant mess. Imagine how big of a mess the kids can make right here. Come on back to this uh, this room back here. I don't know why the the lights aren't working right now. This basically this whole thing slides out. You have like a little hallway, and you could like hop on the bed, but it's basically all the way up against the wall. Right now, you could actually walk all the way around it. There's a spot for a TV right here. You can walk back here. Pretty cool unit. Maybe what we could do is we could put like a fold down bed and then we could like a shelf and then we could put a kid up there. You know, just like like throw a kid up there on like a ledge. And then if you want some privacy back if here. If you want some privacy, you just open the door and then look at that. Now it's closed. Then I could just be sitting here going down the road, reading the magazine, or I could just be sitting here on the phone. On Facebook Marketplace. Like this. Maybe I'll just act like I'm going to the bathroom and then I'll, I'll, I'll sneak some marketplace. Where you know Sir? Where. Uh, yes. Sir? Come on in. Look at this fridge though. Giant fridge. Put all the snacks in there. Jamie can make me a sandwich when we're driving oh, down the road. And, and it has this freezer too. It's got the freezer. Yeah. It's got it all. I really like this thing. Should we close the side or just leave it open? Just leave it open, dude. Yeah, Are you going to move it anytime soon? What, this thing? Yeah. We have the fuel pump. Let's put the fuel pump in it today. Right now, right here in the dirt. No, we'll, we'll starting fluid drive it around to the back, back it in the shop, put the fuel pump in it, and then we can go mob this thing. So the slush, May, what's that? May what, 18th? May 28th. May 28th, so we got like a couple days. Is that a two day event or just one? One. But either way, we could drive this up there and the kids can hang out in it. That'd be like a great first event for this thing. All we gotta do is stick the Starlink on the top of this thing and go rip. All right guys, so we got the Starlink out of the trunk of the GTR. You guys seen this yesterday. You know what I enabled yesterday? What? The roaming. I enabled the roaming right there. Run this cable. It's right out the front door. This we're just gonna stick it right here. It said that was fine. Because it's gonna point that way anyhow. Plug in both the units. Watch, look, go look at it. Watch it. It might move. You go over here to the Starlink camp. She's booting right now. I already enabled the oh there it goes. Oh, oh wow. Is that it? It's just booting right now. 
searching. Oh, it's searching. So, so we're online. It works. Just like Technically, that. Technically, maybe. Check out this speed test. <laughs> nice. Is that you? Charles. I think that was a Starlink. Yeah, the speed test is so fast it won't even show you what it is. But it, we just plugged it in. Oh, okay. Our first speed test, which was, it's running it right now. So this is router to the internet, 50 megabytes, 122 megabytes down, and then two megabytes a second up. Let's try the Google one. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so last time we tested it, it was like 40. It was like 40 on Google. So, and, and it repositioned itself. It's doing some, yeah, see, it's turning, it's turning now. So it's trying to figure, it's trying to find a good, the upload is pretty bad. It's point one, which we were really hoping to be at like 10 or so. Well, the upload is what we use for live streams and uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. So like, that's the biggest thing. We need to let it chill for a little bit. Let it like dial in its own settings and figure out its stuff. Technically it needs like 12 hours to like fully figure out what it's doing. And then we need to figure out where we're mounting it, whether we're going to mount it to the building or whether we're going to like do like temporary things like that. I'm going to say if we put it on the roof. They have a little, it would have a lot if it's gonna go path. that way most of the time, we could mount it to like the corner of the building over there. Yeah, we just kind of need to see where it wants to be and then go from there, I guess. I don't know shit about That's right. Yeah, the upload. Ooh, oh, oh. oh! So if we get to average about three. If we could even do three, that'd be fine. Three to seven, we would be okay for a live stream. It it's 3.2. We've already started messing with the RV a little bit today. We have the fuel pump. We have a big door here in the back. The RV is in the front. There's a gate and uh, it doesn't run. We had a giant snake out here just a little bit ago. It was like a six and a half foot red racer. Sean was gonna try to pick it up. I said, no, buddy, that thing will chase you down the block at seven miles an hour. But nonetheless, we do have an RV outside. So now, oh, hey, we need the starting fluid. We gotta get the, the full pump. We also need this. So is, we, that your, is that your full cool pump? We need a, a jump pack of can of starting fluid. This is already about halfway done. So we're gonna see how many feet the RV will drive on a can of starting fluid. And I'm gonna show you guys a magic trick on how to actually drive something or like, instead of like spraying it in there, I don't know, I'm just gonna show you guys the trick, hold on. All right, so essential part of the operation is you gotta, you gotta turn the coach, coach batteries on. We gotta pull these slides in because I don't know if it'll fit through the door. Then when you do the auxiliary start, you getting ready to show you guys the beast right here. It's V10 of furred power. So the trick what we're gonna do and how we're gonna hopefully make this thing be able to drive a little bit better is we're gonna take off this little intake boot. Okay, then we're gonna steal this hose clamp, clamp it around the microfiber. See, Sean? Sean's seen this before. You watched a Motion TV video once or twice, right? This Understand. is how you drive your unit. Look at that. As long as it doesn't suck too hard, it should be good. All right, so give it the initial wetting. You wanna hold that fire extinguisher? I think I'll be alright. So all the jacks are in. We need to close the door. Get the, help. the initial wedding. <coughs> Auxiliary start. As soon as this thing fires up, we're backing up, okay? We're gonna put her in neutral. Do the same distance. Right? Oh, buddy. You need you need to be my fuel. You're the fuel. It actually ran for a while on that. That was good. Come on. I think it needs more. Oh, I, think, I think you have to give it too much. It needs like a nice wedding. It needs that. It likes that. Right, here we go. Wait for the brakes to work. Alright, here we go. Pull out the door. Work it. Oh, we're really moving. Gotta give her some a little extra right now. Going up the, going up the hill. I think it's gonna fit. You think it's gonna fit? Yeah. You're good. It has. Oh, oh shit. Air conditioner. Yep. Well, that. Uh oh. <laughs> well, might have just screwed the garage door. Well, that's not supposed to happen. No, I don't think so. Like as soon as we were going in, I oh, kind of. Oh no! Oh, oh god. What? Uh oh. I need to back up. 
Fine. It like pulled off the top of it. Yeah, just back up and then come forward. Oh, oh no. I say send it. Send her. Yep. You're good. Keep going. You're good. You're good. You're good. Good job! Here's the situation. We hit the AC unit on the front on top of the garage door. We're now out of starring fluid and, and it won't run. Oh, well, they got it running a little bit. You're good! Clear! Keep going! You're clear! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! You're in! You're in! Good to go! Woo! Yeah, let's go! How, how bad is that AC unit? <laughs> wow. Yep. Yeah. RIP. It's just a plastic cover. I think the unit itself is fine. Yeah, the unit's fine. All right, let's see the damage. Oh, my goodness. I think we got lucky. I mean, it's a fiberglass roof. Yeah, we just need one of these. Just take the one off that one and then make a mold. So fiberglass roof, which is good. Okay, you can see it basically just hit the tip and buckled it. And then I think we stopped like right when it barely touched that. And uh, I think we're okay. Now that we have the RV inside, it actually looks, it fits great in here. Okay, here's the plan. We just won't put the lift up and we'll just have the RV in here. This will be the permanent home of the RV. And you know, I like those guys when they, when they get a lot of money, and they get like a nice shop, and then they park their RV in it. And we ain't those guys. You're not that guy, pal, trust me. You're not that guy. Essentially now we need to do the fuel pump. Sean wants to do, he wants to cut a hole underneath. So the, the way it's set up, the last one, the hole would have had to have been like basically right in the walkway. The last RV we had, we did a fuel pump in. Well this one has like a full size, like a queen size bed in the rear, basically right above the where the fuel tank would be. So we can put a hole there and essentially you'll never see it because it's gonna be underneath the bed. So 90 gallons of fuel in this thing. The tanks are massive. We honestly, as of right now, don't have anywhere to store 90 gallons of fuel. Find out where it is, get a, get a general idea where it's at, make a little hole, fix it, and then also we can fix that hole, so. Yeah, that's my, that's my idea. So the garage door is okay. The weather stripping is messed up, but that's because I glued glued it to the floor. So I'll, that was already previous. So basically, I just hit the little plastic thing. So Mick, which he's our landlord, if you're watching this, uh, the door's okay. All right, Sean. God, no. I need some pliers. What's the what, what's the deal? What have you figured out? I figured out how to stab myself with tax strip. Oh, good. So underneath the coach, basically the jack is like right, like the hydraulic jack has been welded to the frame after the fuel pump has already been hung. Uh, we initially thought that the fuel tank pump, everything was underneath the bed right here. That's why we pulled everything right here. But Sean has actually figured out it's pretty much gonna be like right here. So what we're gonna do is lift up the bed, pull off the tack strip, pull the carpet back. And essentially we're just gonna cut a hole. How, how thick is that uh, plywood? Probably half inch? Or do you think it's 7 16 We have a circular saw. We're just drill a hole. We'll cut a hole. We'll put some two by fours on the back side of it. Basically it's like a flange, we'll be able to sit it back down. Now we'll have like a serviceable fuel pump in the coach, which is nice. Cause then if this ever happens again, let's say we're somewhere and this happens again, instead of being on the side of the road with your family and having a bunch of other stuff, you can just order a fuel pump. Bam, there you go. Sean's getting the carpet out. Look at that. Beautiful. So if you're currently on the side of the road right now and you're F53 uh, chassis, I guess maybe, I hope this helps you. If somebody's on the side of the road trying to do this and they're thinking, you guys need to comment. If it's in a couple years and we helped you out, make sure to hit that like button. Share this with your RV and homies. What if there's just a hole just ready for it? It says, grill me right here. What did he say? How do we go about doing it? Just get the circular saw and kind of set it to, let's say three eighths and see if it penetrates all the way through and then. I just hope it doesn't get any of the wiring or. Well, as long as it's just the, the basically the height of the wood, we should be. It doesn't say what size the wood is anywhere. We're just gonna we're gonna drill a pilot hole, see how deep this is, see see if we're in the right vicinity, and then we're gonna go ahead. So I made the decision just to go ahead and do it. So we're gonna see if we can get. So that's I'd say that's three quarter inch OSB right there. Yep.
definitely a square there. And there's no insulation in that hole. I almost wonder if the mice got there and chewed the wires because there's obviously mouse poop right there. Okay, so this thing right here, it's like a live view camera. So you can see, we can see Sean right there. Looks like we found a cockroach in the toilet or something. It's just, it just happened to be Sean. We got a cockroach. We got a cockroach. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put, stick it down this hole. All right, let's see what we see. Uh-oh. What is nope. that? What if we're in the wrong spot? What about that? So what we're, is in the, that? we're in the right spot from where what you is that? said the fuel pump was. So we found our hot and cold water. I feel like this is the top of like the gray water tank or something. That's it, right? We found some more mouse poo. All right, boys, so we got some hole saws. We'll drill some holes. We ran into a floor joist, which is like an aluminum C channel. Essentially on that side of the coach. So we weren't really centered or maybe the joists aren't centered in here. Looking over here on this side is a storage tank. On this side of the coach, there's not like a storage thing. I think like the generator and stuff is like over there. But on top of it right now, on top of the fiberglass shell, there's actually like a thick rubber like math that's like screwed down, which looks like pretty much where the- a, Like a stubby Phillips. Like where the, where the fuel pump would be. So- Can you give me a stubby um, Phillips? It's just down in there. Maybe we'll take a video with the phone and try to get a good thing, but we're gonna, we're gonna try to figure it out. So how big of a freaking hole do we get it? We gotta come, basically come, come this way. More, the center is more this way, so. so it, it's crazy, it? it has a service door, but it's below two different sheets oh, of buddy, wood. that's and, it. That's it. That is our full pump. That's it. So here in about 20 minutes, we're gonna be driving this thing out of the shop. All right. All right, so we made an amazing discovery. Look at that. The wires are just chewed through Rabbits, right there. Rabbits, buddy. Rabbits or mice. Rabbits or mice. It's crazy because you would think that like that black and that red. That pink be... and black is the power for it. Forge pink and black is power. Well, I guess it's yeah. Pink and black is power for the fuel pump. Well, the pump. other thing, that whole uh, that whole other fuel pump has a, a whole harness with it. Crazy thing is, like, I feel like we almost might not be able to disconnect the harness. You think you could pull that harness over here and disconnect just fix it? Fix that and tape it up. No, I know, but like, should we replace the fuel pump since we're here? Well, here's the thing: is we have the option to if we ever need to. So I, I would just fix it and see if it works. Okay. If it works, it, that's how many miles on this thing? Eighty. Yeah. But fix that. But connect it. That pink and black is the power for fuel pump. That's Ford's power wire. Well, that's it. There we go. <clears throat> there we are. We figured it out. But now, now if you have to change the fuel pumps, there you go. It's right here. We can just put the fuel pump in that thing and then yeah, we'll have everything just in case. Comes with need. a new fuel pump. Comes with a new fuel pump just yeah. in case. It didn't need it. <clears throat> and, a, and a hatch to get to it. Nice. So we made that discovery. Sean, Sean, have you got it fixed yet? Yeah. Let me see if the... Ready to rip? Let me see if the fuel pump controls to go ahead. So there's the power wire and another wire were shoot up. Fixed out with butt connectors, but still don't have nothing. So you might have shorted the fuse. We're going to find a fuse now. Right now, there's essentially no power getting to the fuel pump. Where's the voltmeter at? Outside. Okay, so this is the harness that basically sits on top of the tank that that's, uh, supplies power to the uh, fuel pump. So we basically fished it back down here so we could check the wiring, um, have better access to it. Because basically when it was up there, as tight as you could pull it towards you, you still couldn't see it. You have to have your, there's like so many layers to these things that you had your hand there on this, but you could pull it towards you until it stopped and you couldn't see it. And I want to put a voltmeter on it and see what I can figure out. So we basically well, fished it, fish it down here. So where's Trevor at? Is he in the... Trevor, are you inside? I'm not even, I'm not finding any ground. Grab me that fuel bump. Yeah, this fuel bump's brand new, so should be good, right? Should be. I'm gonna see if it does anything. Key on! I'm not getting any. I almost feel like it's a ground that we're not getting. Okay, give me a key off and on. Again? I can't find power at either one of the, so basically there's a split here. I think they 
come off the same. So it's basically like a, an opposite of that. I don't know if there's two different fuel pump styles maybe that these things came with, because there's a male and a female plug that are basically the same with the same wire schemat like wire color basically. I'm trying to verify. So the fuel pump set up, pink is hot, black is ground on here, pink and black is hot, and then black and white is ground. I'm trying to find the ground at least. So basically the fuse is good. Um, the relay is doing what it's supposed to do. But basically here at this point where the harness plugs into the fuel pump, we don't have power. On a normal vehicle, you can pretty much trace the entire wire loom, the length of the vehicle. On this, it's a little bit different because it's so, just so big and everything's just built around the chassis that you don't really have any access to any of this stuff. So we're gonna have to kind of see if we can find any more chewed wires or figure out why these wires aren't, where we're not getting power, if, if they're cut, if they're chewed or who knows what. So that's what we're gonna do now somehow. Buddy, the, uh, so the inertia switch was basically uh, tripped. So I just I just reset it. Have him have him turn the key on. Isaiah, can you turn the key on? I think it is. I don't get it. That the inertia switch was definitely tripped though. Oh, there it went. Oh, you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Well, you heard it, right? Yeah. The other one, film. Uh -huh. Okay. Do it again. Oh. He's just his connector. I don't need this anymore. Now I have to figure out how to fish this back into the uh, coat hanger. Yeah, I'm sure to fish tape this. Yeah. Is it good? Sweaty. Yeah. Alright, so we, uh, what was the issue? There was a lot of them. So, a bunch of little issues, but effectively now, fuel pump is working, right? Should be. OEM fuel pump. Blinkers on because there's kids up here. Let's see. Buddy, it worked. Not even any starting fluid. Not. All right. Good job, buddy. All right. So I think now we're basically we're gonna pull in the slides. Take it for a drive. See how it's actually doing now. So the brake master cylinder is kind of sketchy. You like to take a look at it. I'm definitely not proud of it. A little rusty. A little bit low on brake fluid. In that. We're just adding a little bit more to it right now. The pedal kind of felt kind of sketchy when we we're pulling it in, so. There's like an electronic pump since this thing is like a, it's a hydraulic. Well, basically when the engine's running, not running, so that way you still have brakes. So like if the engine died, you could still hit the brakes. It has like an electric pump. Now I think normally it has like a hydro boost, which is basically like it uses the power steering pump. If it's not, then it has a little electric pump so you actually have brakes. Cause like, imagine trying to stop this thing without like a vacuum assist or like a hydraulic assist. It's probably really hard. Use my dipstick right here. Check that, make sure there's enough in there and then we'll go from there. First drive, hopefully. Is Sean in here? Not yet. Hopefully he's not gonna come in here. Uh, he has to hold the door open so we don't smash it. The brakes are sketchy. That's all I gotta say. I don't like it. Oh, it just feels like it's gonna tip. Like the other one felt the same way. I hope the oil pressure gauge doesn't work either. Cause that would be. Are we gonna hit that bridge on this? Yeah. Oh yeah. Are we close? Okay. Oh, are you like super close? Oh my god, that was. It feels like we're like on a on the ocean. <laughs> this is our first uh, grade. And this isn't even that bad. Does it feel like we're going to go off the mountain over there? Yes! It feels like we're going to tip go. over. <laughs> All right, let's go camping. This Holy is sh oh my God. Oh Brother. Is there airbags on it? Will you slow down? Slow down? I'm flooring it. I'm ready to get out. You can pick me up on <laughs> your way back. I'm just chilling. Nice and floaty. It's like, it flows like a house. And, uh, yeah, I don't like the power. It doesn't have it. doesn't have any. It's slow. And this, is just, this thing is just like wrapped out to do anything. Imagine if the brakes went out right now. Yeah. Well, that'd be great. Why are you putting that bad juju out here, man? So I think there's some room down here to turn around. I really don't think there is. Wait, you're on my ship right now. I'm the captain. This is completely fine. Can you 
you believe people like pull stuff behind these things too? <laughs> yeah, people tow trailers behind them. I think with new shocks, it'd be a little bit better. It, the recommended speed was 35, so we're already doing better than than what the sign says. If you can compete with the sign and do better than it, then that, that's how you know you have a high performance vehicle, <laughs> high performance RV. Yeah, speed limit, if you can go the speed limit, you're great. So the factory shocks on these things are the bill signs, and that's what's on it. It has 80,000 miles on it, so it probably needs some, I was reading some forums on it, and one guy basically said to uh, replace the shocks. He said that that was like the single biggest thing that like made this thing feel like a lot better. Cause he like, has this forum, like he had built his own HTML website and like goes over all the maintenance. He's like one of those guys where it's like his own forum of like knowledge on like doing the brakes and doing the axle and recharging the AC and changing the carpet and like, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. He said the best thing that he did to improve the ride and the feel of this thing was to do uh, the shocks on it. Obviously 80,000 miles with this thing, with how much weight going down the highway bouncing, it could probably definitely use some shocks. All right, so right now we're gonna try out the leveling jacks and see if those work. All right, guys, so I guess that's a wrap on uh, the, huh? Look at that, custom. We uh, replaced the fuel pump. Well, actually we didn't replace the fuel pump. We still have a fuel pump. Cut a hole in there. We got that all situated, not situated in the back. We need to figure that stuff out in the back. But overall, this thing runs and drives. It's my first time ever actually driving a V10 uh, powered coach. I guess the first V10 I ever drove was my R8. But other than that, it's really slow. It's definitely slower than the R8. And it doesn't really have that much torque. I feel like the one that I recently had, I never really showed you guys anything about it. It was a 92, but it had a 454 in it. I felt like it had more power than this. This one has more gears. It's a four speed instead of a three speed. But overall, I, I think it would feel, it feels sketchy going down the road because it's just like, you know, you hit a dip and then like the whole thing just like rocks. But I think we'll eventually figure that out. Probably some new shocks, some other things like that. But nonetheless, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video where we're gonna do something cool. If you like these videos and the month of maybes, make sure you are subscribed with those post notifications on. Really appreciate you guys watching this video. Be sure to like it if you like it. See you guys in the next one.